The Griffins and The Simpsons are two TV families that have made us laugh for years, and who never age. While they both have a unique style and storyline, they've become the animated world's biggest rivals. Both with two parents and three kids, these two shows represent the American family in their own ludicrous way, and have characters that fans quote and love. But viewers seem to be getting into the same debate. Which show is better? Hi, I'm Adrian, and we're here to talk about the two most famous cartoon families, so get your couches ready, cause Channel Frederator is counting down 11 reasons Family Guy is better than The Simpsons. Let's get started. Number 11, edgier humor. While The Simpsons always stays within the safety lines, Family Guy isn't afraid to push the limits with their jokes. They've poked fun at stereotypes, religion, health issues, death, and even handicapped people. It's a type of humor that points out absurdities in a no apologies way. They poke fun at Peter having a stroke, Peter not allowing handicapped people in his restaurant, Peter blowing the cover of Anne Frank's Family Hiding, and Peter singing a song about Jews. So I guess the common denominator here is Peter, who is supposed to be a dumb, ignorant guy, and they usually have an underlying message through the twisted jokes. They've received a ton of heat for these jokes, especially one revolving around Michael J. Fox having Parkinson's disease. But make no mistake, people are watching and people are laughing. Though The Simpsons may have been funny in its prime, it hasn't updated its humor, only its current events. It still has the same 90s family sitcom style of safe humor that dishes lukewarm jokes to its viewers. Its more controversial episodes are about Homer's homophobia, which he gets over of course, an episode where he fist fights George H.W. Bush, a later episode about gay marriage being legalized in Springfield, and episodes that don't paint certain countries in a positive light. Big whoop. Family Guy isn't afraid to upset some people in order to express witty jokes or storylines. They're not as over the top as South Park, but they definitely surpass The Simpsons on edgy humor. Number 10, better comedic devices. The flashback and what if devices are used pretty often in Family Guy. While The Simpsons has used flashbacks once in a while, it's not a regular occurrence, and they usually stick to a more linear story. It also doesn't typically use the what if gag of showing a possible or existing scenario that a character just mentioned. Family Guy uses both flashbacks and what if scenarios. For example, in one episode, Peter argues with Lois saying, don't drag the rest of us down with you like a mentally handicapped rooster. The show then cuts to a scene of roosters crowing, one of which is mentally handicapped, and says, Good night, everybody, instead of crowing. It's the what if a rooster was really mentally handicapped scenario, and you can't help but laugh at its absurdity. These gags allow for a limitless amount of humor and more creative ways to get there. The Simpsons pretty much only follows the current story happening, which is similar to a live action show and doesn't take as much advantage of the infinite possibilities with cartoons. Number 9, Realistic Animation. The family and the Simpsons are not only a strange yellow color, but also oddly shaped, the kids all have spiky triangles as hair, and Marge has the tallest standing hair known to mankind, and it's blue. These weird shapes and colors make it more geared towards children, but Family Guy chose to make their family more realistic and human-like. This makes for a funnier show because you know these are supposed to be real human beings doing these ridiculous things versus yellow human-like creatures that are already not normal human beings from the moment you see them. The realistic looking characters in Family Guy also differentiate it as a show for adults instead of a more family-friendly show like The Simpsons. It's also easier to relate to human beings versus yellow looking people and it makes it that much more believable and that much more funny when they get into trouble. Plus, don't get me started on Krusty and Sideshow Bob. Not exactly your traditional looking clown and sidekick, although Carrot Top is a close Bob. Number 8 less predictable. Granted, the longer a show like this is on, the more predictable it usually becomes since you know the characters and their gags. But Family Guy has remained pretty unpredictable after 14 seasons. You definitely know Peter is going to do something stupid, but they continue to surprise viewers with how. And even the episode where Brian dies was so shocking that fans had mock funerals for him. Main characters in The Simpsons always go back to their status quo, and nothing ever changes, including the way they get into trouble. You can even predict when Nelson's going to say, which is every time you see him. And you can see any trouble coming before it happens, because the characters are gullible enough to fall for everything. I'm sure it's tough to come up with new stories after 27 seasons, but The Simpsons has lost its magic and continues to use the same old formula, while Family Guy still has fans guessing what insanity is to come, and it doesn't always teach a lesson like The Simpsons. Snooze! Number 7, Better Characters. The Simpsons may have more characters to work with, but Family Guy has better and funnier characters in general. Stewie alone is so memorable and funny that he got his own movie special. What other show has a mad genius evil baby? 
Quagmire is another character that always incites laughs and really awkward moments that viewers can't forget, with his pervy pedophilia and his giggity giggity catchphrase. But the whole Griffin family is much funnier than the Simpsons family in general, and though the side characters in The Simpsons are unique, many aren't three-dimensional enough to dive into for more than one episode. Cleveland, however, was good enough a character to get his own spin-off show. The Family Guy characters are also more realistic, fortunately and unfortunately. Okay, except for the talking dog. Number 6. Harder Core Fans In 2013, Family Guy killed off Brian Griffin, the talking family dog. Fans were pissed. They took to social media to express their outrage and used the hashtag bring back Brian to demand Seth MacFarlane resurrect the character. A petition started to bring Brian back and got thousands of signatures, mock funerals were held, and one diehard fan went as far as to get a rest in peace Brian tattoo. Fortunately, Brian was brought back to life a few weeks later, but unfortunately, tattoos are permanent. Though The Simpsons heyday was in the pre-social media era, fans did not seem to be upset when Mr. Burns seemingly died, with the death of Maude Flanders, or with the the death of the family cat Snowball. Maybe they weren't as funny as Brian, or maybe fans weren't as attached to the characters' fates, but we doubt there were ever moments of silence held for anyone on The Simpsons. Family Guy fans may be a little much, but they're 120% invested and dedicated to their beloved Griffin family and friends. Now that's loyalty. Number 5. The show itself was resurrected. Family Guy has impressively been brought back from cancellation twice. The Simpsons may have never been cancelled in the first place, but that doesn't mean it's because it's still good. Maybe in the 90s, fans would have been upset if The Simpsons was cancelled, but nowadays people are ambivalent and would think it was about time since it's run its course. Most of their fans don't even watch every episode anymore, but with Family Guy, the fans are what actually brought the show back and keep it going. When the show got cancelled, they bought tons of Family Guy DVDs, about 2.8 million, and watched the reruns on Cartoon network, making Fox executives rethink their decision. Though they had a smaller number of viewers than desired, the number was full of the young 18-49 demographic and full of hardcore fans. Fox decided to give the show another run, and luckily, the show grew and grew and is still going strong. Number 4. The Blue Harvest episode. This was such an epic episode. It almost wins extra bonus points for both humor and the nerding out element. The Simpsons has made several Star Wars references, but it's never had an entire episode spoofing the famous franchise. Family Guy went one step ahead and made it an hour long episode, almost like a mini film. The episode has Peter retelling the Star Wars story because the electricity in the house has gone out. In this hilarious recount, Chris is Luke Skywalker, oddly enough, Lois is Princess Leia, Peter is Han Solo, Brian is Chewbacca, Quagmire is C3PO, Cleveland is R2. D2 and Stewie is Darth Vader, of course. It aired in 2007 to 10.8 million viewers and is still a fan favorite. Number 3. Better Catchphrases and Gags Obviously, The Simpsons has tons of catchphrases. Homer's DOPE, Bart's Eat My Shorts, and I Caramba, Apu's Thank You Come Again, and even Mr. Burns' is Excellent. But these have been used almost too much and are no longer funny when you hear them. Family Guy still has hilarious catchphrases like Shut Up Meg. They also have Quagmire's Giggity Giggity. And let's not forget Stewie's What the Deuce or Cleveland's Oh That's Nasty. These lines are funny but yet not overused. Family Guy also has better gags like the feud between Peter and the chicken and the time Peter hurt his knee and whined in pain for about 30 seconds. The Simpsons couch gag was cool in the beginning but because they do it every single episode it's not that funny anymore. Family Guy knows how to give you just a little and save it for another time. They rarely overplay things, which keeps the humor alive. Number 2. Emmy Nomination In 2009, Family Guy became the second ever animated show to be nominated in the Outstanding Comedy Series category at the Emmys, the first being The Flintstones. Though they didn't win, it was a huge surprise to everyone that they were even included, because in all of its 27 seasons, The Simpsons has never been nominated in that category. Clearly, the universe was saying that Family Guy is better than The Simpsons. Number 1. Stewie is funnier than Maggie. While Maggie is sweet and adorable, and has a funny rivalry with the unibrow baby, she is nowhere near as hilarious as Stewie. First of all, Stewie talks. Maggie does not. That allows for much more opportunity to say and do funny things. Stewie is also very unique because he's evil and he's a mad genius. How many babies are evil mad geniuses? It may not be realistic, but neither is a talking dog, and they're both hysterical. Maggie can only have a few cute scenes here and there, while Stewie is one of the main characters, has his own film, and is a fan favorite. Some could even say Stewie makes the show. So sorry, Mags, but Stewie wins the cake on this one, and so does Family Guy in general. Thanks for watching 11 Reasons Family Guy is Better Than The Simpsons. What's your favorite thing about Family Guy? Which show do you prefer? Comment below and let us know. And make sure to subscribe to get all your cartoon trivia, because remember, Frederator loves you.